Hello again, Higher Algebra students, here with the second lesson of Unit 9, which is factoring polynomials. Uh, so first lesson dealt with degree of the polynomial, and adding and subtracting and evaluating, uh, multiplying. And so now we're going to go one more level here and talk about factoring the polynomials. So again, we've discussed factoring second degree polynomials uh, previously. We talked about um, one method was grouping. And so again, with grouping, this is also kind of uh, referred to here as the AC method at times, which in this case, A times C, which this is A and this is C, has a product of negative 12. Uh, so again, when you think about what are the factors of 12, we've got 1, 12, 2, 6, 3. So we take these factors now, and we want two factors that will add up to a positive 1. Well, you can see if I make this a plus 4 and a negative 3, that product, negative 3 times 4, is negative 12, so that's good. And they add up to a positive 1. So with grouping, what we're really doing is we're rewriting this equation. And you could do minus, then plus, or plus, then minus. I'm going to do the plus 4 and then minus 3x, sorry, um, and x here to show what I do typically with the minus. And so I think one thing that you will find easier is when we group... One thing is when we group here, we're putting parentheses around these, but we aren't actually subtracting a negative two here. We're just using the parentheses. So I'm gonna put a plus a negative. So I just write this as plus a negative. I'm not actually distributing out a negative one. It's just instead of saying minus three, I'm gonna say plus negative three. And that plus in between makes my life a little easier as I go down to group now, or to finish the grouping process to factor. And so what I'm going to do here is from this first term, I'm going to pull out a 2x, and that leaves me with 3x plus 2. And then in the second term, I'm going to pull out a negative 1. And again, I'll just leave the plus there. And then that gives me, again, 3x plus 2. So again, if you recall with grouping, what we wanted was to have in, in the parentheses the same term, and then outside we could combine that. So what we really had here then was 2x minus 1 and 3x plus 2. And then to solve this, we set each of these equal to 0. And so 2x equals 1. So x equals 1 half here. And then here, 3x equals negative 2. Divide by 3, so x equals a negative 2 over 3. And again, I could then... Uh, foil just to check and make sure that what I have found as an answer here did end up equaling my original uh, polynomial. So first, outside, inside, last. And you can see there's my plus 4x minus 3x, which is what I had in the middle when I started to group. Uh, and I've got my 6x squared and my minus 2 at the end. So it does end up equaling the original equation again. So I did group correctly there. And again, to solve for the quadratic here, we're just solving for the zeros and getting our x value that, that uh, gives us the zeros with each one of these here and here. Okay. As we look at this now with third degree polynomials, and so we've got four terms here, this is where it's actually even a little nicer. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to group just by putting parentheses around uh, both sets of, or both pairs here, I guess, the first two terms and then the second two terms. And I'm going to pull out a greatest common factor from each. So I pull out an x squared, which leaves me with x minus 1. And then again, plus, and again, I would like this to be x minus 1 because I want what's in the parentheses to be the same. So that means I just pulled out a 2. So I combine these and I have an x squared plus two, and then I have x minus one. Now I do need to make sure with this x squared that that can't be factored down any further. Um, the two is not a, a perfect square, so that, um, and the plus is problematic here to allow us to factor this down. And we'll, we'll take a look at that as we move forward. Um, so here's our final answer. And again, I could verify this by foiling. I won't do every time, but I'll do once more here. That's an x cubed. Outside is a negative x squared. Inside is a positive 2x. And last is a minus 2. And again, if you take the parentheses off of this, that is what we had to begin with. Now, same thing here. 
Um, but like we did earlier, I'm going to turn this into a plus and make this a negative. Now, keep in mind, it's when I'm grouping, I'm not carrying that subtraction all the way through. So I don't need to do the distributing by negative one here. Okay, that is um, not necessary because grouping is not, we're not actually subtracting the second half from the first half. We're just rewriting this as plus a negative here and then just putting parentheses around different parts. So we aren't, um, it doesn't change the format. Again, if we were doing to begin with um, b cubed minus 6b squared as, a, as its own polynomial minus a second polynomial that was 4b plus 24, this would now carry through. Okay, but again, that's not how this was presented. This was presented as one formula, not a subtraction or one polynomial, not a subtraction of two polynomials here. Um, even though it looks like that, when we place the parentheses around it, um, that's not what was happening to begin with. The grouping is not subtracting the second half from the first half. The grouping is just putting them on teams and the first two go on one team and the next two go on another team so that we can start to pull out greatest common factors, which on this first one, the greatest common factor there is a B squared. And on the second one, the greatest common factor, again, if we want this to be B minus six again, which would be the hope, that means we'd be pulling out a negative four. Okay, so pulling out a negative four here allows this negative four B to go to a positive B because now that times that is negative four B and pulling out a negative four, negative four times negative six is a positive 24, which is what we have there. And again, we do get the help by the fact that we want B minus six to be inside the parentheses for both because then our first one here is gonna be B squared minus four. Now, this is where we gotta be mindful. B squared minus four can be factored down further, okay? This is a perfect square binomial here because this is b plus 2, b minus 2, okay? And again, if you FOIL that, there's b squared, there's plus 2b, there's minus 2b, and then there's minus 4. So if you get a second degree term, a squared term, and minus a perfect square, that allows us to break it down more because the middle term, the, the b's, will cancel in that middle term because we get a 2b and a negative 2b. So they simplify out. Um, and so we end up with b squared minus 4. So again, looking for squaring minus a perfect square there. And so again, our final answer here is b plus 2, b minus 2. And then we still had that b minus 6. And of course, to solve this now, we just set each of these equal to zero. B plus two equals zero, B minus two equals zero, and B minus six equals zero. So B is either gonna be negative two, two, or six. Um, so you can see we have three solutions. There are three x-intercepts, which is plausible in a third degree polynomial. Um, so we solved this polynomial here after factoring by grouping and getting our three zeros then. Here's another one with, again, third degree. Um, it is important to note, though, you can see 5, 40, 10, and 80. Um, that tells us that we do have a 5 that we can pull out right away. So let's make our lives a little easier, and let's pull out a 5. So that would be minus 8k squared minus 2k plus, again, 80 divided by 5, then would be 16. Uh, so now we've got a little easier quadratic to work with. Now, a little easier polynomial to work with. So that five is always gonna be along for the ride. We do have to keep that in mind, but let's take this, what's inside the parentheses in group. Okay, so we've got k cubed minus eight k squared plus a negative two k plus 16. Again, we don't have to carry that subtraction out to the 16 because we're just putting them on teams. We aren't subtracting the second half as a group from the first half. Okay, so again, we can just make it plus a minus, plus a negative. So for that k cubed minus 8k squared, well, they just have a k squared in common. So that's just the greatest common factor there is k squared. So that would be k minus 8. So again, we want the second half to be k minus 8. Can we, can we make that happen? Well, we can. What we're going to do is pull out a negative 2. 
and you can kind of leave the plus in there then. Or not kind of, you can leave the plus in there. So we pull out that negative 2. Again, negative 2 times k is negative 2k. Negative 2 times negative 8 is a positive 16, which is what we had. So we now have an answer of, uh, we have the k minus 8, which you can put there. Um, again, it doesn't matter what order you put these parentheses in. I'm just putting them in the opposite uh, is what I had been. And then this would be k squared minus 2. Um, and when I say opposite, I just mean I'm taking what was in the parentheses and putting it first, and then the combo of the other two, putting that second here. Um, doesn't really matter between these two. These two could swap order. Um, and now I have that squared term, but again, I'm not subtracting a perfect square. So I'm just going to leave my final answer just like this here. Okay. Again, looking at this, we've got 12. Well, 12, go, uh, 3 goes into 12, 3 goes into 21, 3 goes into 24, and 3 does go into 42. So the first thing I'm going to do here is pull out a 3. Um, again, if you miss that, that's okay. You can pull it out at the end, but you really should take that 3 out, um, simplify that out at some point or factor that out at some point. Um, and so uh, it, it can be done right away. It can be done at the very end. It can be done somewhere in the middle. Um, but the 3 is a common factor of all four of these terms. And so at some point it should be removed um, as our final answer would still then have a three in, in as a common term in one of the parentheses. Uh, so here we've got four P cubed because 12 times, or excuse me, three times four gives us 12. We've got minus seven P squared plus eight P minus 14. Okay. So again, I just divided each of the terms here by three as I factored out that three. So now I'm going to group, take this first half, Again, the second half already was a plus, so I'm just going to leave it as is this time. So from the first half, I can pull out just a p squared, it looks like. And again, I have that 3 along for the ride. Um, put a little bracket around this whole thing since the 3 is really multiplied by everything. So when I pull out that p squared, I still have 4p with my first term, and I still have a 7 here. Um, now, in the second term, again, I'd like for it to be 4p minus 7, so it aligns with the first. And I can do that if I pull out a 2. So with that, I can now write my final answer with the 3. Uh, again, doesn't matter which one. I'll, I'll actually do the p squared plus 2 first this time, which is these two terms. And then I still have the 4p minus 7. And again, when I look at this, 4p, four 4, excuse me, p squared plus 2 cannot be simplified any further. I'm not subtracting a perfect square. So to solve it here, what I really need is p squared plus 2 needs to equal 0, and 4p minus 7 needs to equal 0. Well, that would be 4p equals 7. So seven. Now, our other term here leaves a little more work because of the fact that when you subtract 2 from both sides here, you end up with a p squared equals negative 2. Well, keep in mind, if we had, say, x squared equals 4, and we took the square root of both sides there, that would mean that x equals plus or minus 2. So when we take the square root here, we've got a couple things in play. Not only does p equal plus or minus something, but we also have a negative root here. So we have an imaginary root 2. Um, again, the root up here sticks along for the ride here. We were able to take turn this one into just p, but here we can't we, we aren't going to take the square root of 2 or negative 2, so we're going to leave that as root 2, but we still have to put in that i because of that negative right there forces us to deal in the imaginaries. Now looking at this next example, this is a uh, going to be a much quicker one here. Um, there's no common factor to pull out, so we're really just going to group to begin with. It's already a plus, so I don't have to worry about uh, adding a negative or anything like that. So the first term, we can pull out an n squared, so that leaves us with n plus 5. Now, the second term is already n plus 5, but we have to be careful here. There is technically a 1 in front of that uh, because we need one of these n plus 5s. If we don't put anything there, um, then the common mistake would be that a student uh, may just leave it as n squared 
and then n plus 5, when it should be n squared plus 1 and n plus 5. And you can see if I were to distribute this, that would give me an n cubed, and that would give me a 5n squared. But I wouldn't have my last two terms. But if I were to FOIL this, I'd get my last two terms because that 1 would be multiplied by an n to give me the 1n. And then the 1 would be multiplied by a 5 to give me that 5. So you do need that 1 out front, just as a reminder, even though we don't see it right away. Uh, so when we solve this, we're going to run into the same problem we had on the last one. So we have n squared plus 1 equals 0. So n squared equals negative 1 when we subtract 1 from both sides. And you take this root. So again, it's going to be plus or minus. And in this case, we'd have i root 1. Um, because it's an imaginary, because we're taking the square root of a negative value again. Uh, so technically, that's two solutions there, plus or minus i root 1. Um, and then our other solution, n plus 5 equals 0, so n equals negative 5 there. One final example here where we have a, a degree 3, but we have a common factor. And one thing, the, the 2 is one that you catch right away here on that common factor. Um, but we also need to make sure that we catch the x, okay? So uh, by catching the x, now all of a sudden we get ourselves down to an x squared here uh, plus 5x, again, because we've taken an x away from each of these. So the x cubed goes to x squared, x squared goes to x. And then on the last one, we lost the x completely. Now it's just plus 6. So at this point, now we're just looking for two values that multiply to 6 and add to 5. So 2 times 3 multiplies to 6 and adds to 5. So we can rewrite this as 2x, and then we'll go with an x plus 2 and an x plus 3. We don't need to group here. Um, again, this is just going back to our roots here of factoring, of finding two values that we can put with an x that, again, multiply to the, the final term and add up to the middle term. So you can see if I were to FOIL here, just go with a different colored highlighter here, there's an x squared. We've got a 3x on the outside, a 2x on the inside, which gives us 5x. And then 2 times 3 gives us 6. So now when we solve this, what we really have then, again, there's three different solutions here. We've got 2x equals 0. We've got x plus 2 equals 0. And we've got x plus 3 equals 0. So when we divide by 2 here, we've got an x equals 0. We've got an x equals negative 2. And we've got an x equals negative 3. So there's our three solutions. Uh, again, thanks for listening. If you have questions, please make sure you ask.